Welcome citizens, we're going to take a look through the new spacecraft trailers and give our thoughts on them. First up is the Valkyrie. Ask any soldier. They'll tell you that battles aren't won or lost based on weapons or numbers or even hardware. They're won on choices. For over a century, our ships have distinguished themselves in thousands of civilian and military combat operations. We are proud to announce another weapon in the arsenal of victory. Get ready for the next generation of warfare with Anvil's Valkyrie Dropship. This multi-role weapon platform is designed to get personnel in and out of the hottest combat zones. Featuring four powerful rotating thrusters with VTOL capabilities, the Valkyrie is capable of landing with surgical precision to deploy assets. Fitted with a vehicle bay and ramp, you can also efficiently launch ground-based troop transports or reconnaissance vehicles in the field. Each high-performance operator seat features rugged construction with added support to minimize G-force for up to 20 personnel, making sure that your fighting force arrives on site ready to jump into the fray. And don't think for a second that the Valkyrie can't hold its own in a fight. Two remote turrets featuring size three hardpoints can provide suppressing fire during deployment. Two additional manned turrets provide even more devastating fire to blur the line between dropship and gunship. In the days of antiquity, the Valkyrie were believed to choose which warriors may die in battle and which may live. With Anvil's Valkyrie, we put that choice in your hands. God, I want that. <laughs> I don't know what you'd use it for. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a paperweight. My God. <clears throat> just looks mental. Everything about that screams, buy me. Buy me now. It's, um, <laughs> kind of reminds me of like part um, that dropship in Avatar and part the one in Aliens 2. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, I like it. It looks very industrial, which I quite like. Um, it's not super pretty. It just looks beefy. Yeah, it's got that whole um, anvil. Looks like the terrapin on steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is pretty well kitted out. And um, you know, I love the idea of being able to... The fact that you can pretty much take everyone and... The vehicle they're going to travel in when they hit the ground is just awesome yeah yeah I like that very much i bet it costs 2.7 billion pounds <laughs> <laughs> i think it's uh currently in the store for about 200 pound i think it was. Okay. Uh, there's two different sort of variants there's the normal one mm. uh which is 400 400 US dollars uh, for the Valkyrie that's the war bond so it's 450 pound uh, dollars 450 dollars for the standalone ship well there's something called a drop pack which is 840 <laughs> <laughs> dear god just anything to rinse your pockets, that's insane. Okay, with that one you get the Valkyrie, you get a Dragonfly, and you get a Cyclone. And a Vanguard. Oh, wow. That's not bad. I mean, it's still a fuckload of money, but it's... Yeah. That's not bad. Um, I mean, at least there's actual things in the pack. You know, it's it's not like you get this and a poster and a high five, or whatever. You know, it's <laughs> actual actual useful things. And for four hundred dollars, you can get the Valkyrie Liberator Edition, which is just an orange variant. Oh. Um, 
this would be like the Liberator in Planet Side 2 that would be awesome yeah <laughs> that would be <laughs> was, cool put a Zephyr on the bottom and I'm at home <laughs> <laughs> yeah lots of money um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be really useful for big organisations yeah um, soon no not soon not soon <laughs> uh, there's, there's not going to be any use for this for a while but, no um, it looks cool yeah once once you've actually got some organisations that can contribute as an organisation then I think this will become more popular I only have I only have one gripe really about the ship, which is if you watch the video, there's a part where it lands and it shows you the turrets. Man, that bottom turret is so close to the ground. You yeah. Better, you better hope you're landing on even flat ground because <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get crushed. That's, um, yeah. Strange design, but yeah. Overall, I like that. Hmm. Time has come for something new, something to change the game. When seeking fortunes at the fringes of civilization, you need someone you can trust. In this age of uncertainty, it's time to take back your strength. It's time to Release the Kraken. Drake Interplanetary. We got your back. First, okay. <laughs> first time watching that. Um, right. And what an awesome trailer, first of all. That hats off to the fact that all the music, the sound, everything about that was awesome. I very much enjoyed that. I don't even care about the ship. The video was good. <laughs> <laughs> Them but, laser noises, though, coming man, off that ship. Oh, my yeah, God. <laughs> very pew pew. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Oh, man. It, it, I mean, that's so far away from being a reality for almost anyone at the minute but man that is an awesome looking ship it is actually really cool yeah um, I, saw, I love those flipping, those laser noises are great I, I feel like they just made them for the trailer but they should just put them in game because they're great yeah I reckon that is the case um, they've just they've got a really good foley guy who just went I can probably make this better yeah, yeah. My only gripe with that trailer is the beginning bit where it pulls out from Hurston and then goes to the asteroid belt. Yeah. That's a bit long. Um, I don't really know why it started in Hurston. Yeah, I mean, it's not like... I suppose they were trying to get across how far away from civilization they are, but 
But we get that. They're in a yeah. creepy looking asteroid belt. The other thing as well, don't show me Hurston. Makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, this is a, uh, uh, a mini carrier um, sort of thing. Uh, it's a commercial capital ship, I guess. Um, many turrets, it's got an internal hangar. Um, many landing platforms on top, large cargo bay, and a dragonfly bay. That's cool. Yeah, the picture shows like three or four of them, and they can just like deploy at the top, I guess. It's quite cool. I love the idea of that, just a swarm of shit coming off this thing, coming to kill you. <laughs> yeah. It's not scary enough on its own. No current price up yet. Uh, it says if you're interested in buying one, then fill out this form. Oh my god, it's actually priced on application. That means it's going to cost more than my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not going to be too many of these flying around. But, um, no. I mean, it would be yeah. silly if there were a couple of hundred quid because, yeah, everyone would just buy one of these. Oh, and yeah. They'd be like, <laughs> just smashing everyone in, in space. But, um, yeah, I bet it's just crazy priced. So we'll see. Okay. Initial stats are a maximum crew of 10 people to run the thing. Uh, cargo capacity of 3,792. 270 meters long. 104 meters wide. And 64 meters high. Massive. <laughs> One, two, maybe three decks by the look of it. Some sizable amount of turrets as well. Yeah, this could um, this would probably be sort of the budget um, capital ship type thing. Yeah, It'd be very useful if you've got a bunch of ships on in one system and you want to move them all in one go to yeah. another system. Very useful for that. It's definitely, um, you know, this this is going to be what all organizations are going to strive to obtain first <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically definitely. Um, this is definitely you know because the, the the higher end stuff is going to be i'm assuming harder to obtain but this will be kind of this will be the tipping point for a lot of organizations when they get one of these and all of a sudden they've they've made it they've made it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> congratulations you've won star citizen <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh, man. I just I I just like to walk around one to be honest. I don't necessarily need to fly it or take part. I just want to just no. step inside one for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I saw you apply to the Flight Academy again. I'm your new wingman, sir. The coil. Local scum use it for cover to launch attacks. This is their turf, so move when I'm open. Keep your eyes open. No southern moves. Who the hell are you? We're OMC. And OMC belongs to Sato Khan. Is that your boss? Are we supposed to be scared of him or something? Yeah. The OMC aren't the only ones listening into comms. Attacked by Vandal forces. Repeat, we are under attack. Ah! 
Urban battles? Urban losses? Each and every one of you has proven yourself time and again. We will not lose the system. We will not fall back. Four up, Cal. You got a point. Copy that. Tally's on me. Let's say hi. We will win. Because we have to. Indeed. So, Squadron 42. Um, I mean, the trailer's okay. Yeah. The um, first minute or so is mostly made up of footage we've seen already. I was going to say, is. yeah, there was a few scenes in that where I thought, that's very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, some of the new footage looks pretty impressive. Um, yeah. I'm guessing the Vandal... I don't know if they're still thinking about doing it the way they said they were going to do it because they were it was going to be released in different chapters so i thought the vandal would turn up towards the end of chapter one sort of yeah thing. um i don't know if they're still doing it like that though because they haven't really spoken about that no uh, apparently we're getting a uh, sort of roadmap for the game coming up soon cool. we should have a sort of an idea of what the plan is but um, yeah, it looks like it's going to start out. Uh, you're fighting these is it, OMC, the, uh, the sort of uh, rebels, renegade criminals. I don't know what they are. Rebel Alliance. The Rebel Alliance. <laughs> and then uh, uh, somehow the Vandal's going to come into the picture and then it's going to be a big, massive war with them type thing. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, looks quite impressive. It does. Is there anyone that they couldn't get to voice act in this or no they literally got capture. all of all of hollywood in there <laughs> they, they literally they just they un, unbelievable cast that they got i mean it does feel a little bit like how much how much money must they have spent to get these people when they probably could have used just really good local talent and saved yeah. so much money to put into the game hmm? No, that, that's my only problem with it at the moment. Um, I hope that they're not they're not so in your face where it takes me out of the sort of being immersed immersed in the game. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you're in a dogfight and then I don't know someone's face comes up on your on your screen. And you're like, okay, that's just taking me out of the game. Yeah, like, you're not watching a what, film, you know. you know. What are they doing in this sort of thing? <laughs> What I can't believe is that they've got Mark Strong, um, who has one of the best voices on the planet, just unbelievably like smooth, awesome voice, and they've got him doing American accent. What? Yeah, I know. Waste. That's real. <laughs> Waste. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I liked it. It's it's a good trailer, and I think that it it kind of gives you a good indication of where they're heading, but. Um, yeah, I think um, I don't know. I've I've not really put much stock into Squadron 42 so far. So this has kind of given me a little nudge towards it, and I, I quite like it. So. Mm -hmm. but I'm more excited for them to just finish multiplayer games so that I can go out and do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's cool. I like it. Okay, so that's our uh, our views on the trailer, or trailers. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. Like the video if you like it, and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. Bye for now. Bye.